Hi everyone, if you're a Mac user, today you can upgrade to macOS Big Sur. It's a big change for Mac operating systems. And after 20 years of macOS 10, we're finally moving on to macOS 11. So while it sounds like a big leap, and believe me, Apple's changed a lot of things here, it's actually relatively simple to upgrade your Mac operating system. And I'm gonna show you how, but do stick around because I'll also give you a tour of the new user interface, and I'll show you my favorite new features of macOS Big Sur. First things first, we need to double check that your Mac can run Big Sur. You need a mid-2013 MacBook Air, a late-2013 MacBook Pro, a late-2013 Mac Pro, a mid-2014 iMac, a late-2014 Mac Mini, or any of the 12-inch MacBooks that were released from 2015. Basically, if you bought a Mac computer in the last five years, you're good to go. Now, 99% of the time, upgrades go really easily, particularly on a Mac, but things can go wrong. For example, if you're on an iMac and the power cuts out, it can happen. So on that note, if you have any important files, be sure to back them up before you do the update, either using a thumb drive or free cloud storage from iCloud, Google Drive, or Dropbox. Go to System Preferences, then press Software Update. You should see an update available for Big Sur. Click upgrade now and we'll begin downloading. Now go ahead and follow those on-screen instructions. Download time will depend on how fast your internet connection is and installation time will depend on how fast your computer is. The computer will also restart once or twice during the installation. If anything does go wrong, I have a great video on my channel on how to restore your Mac to its factory settings and it should actually restore it to Big Sur if it's compatible. All going well, you should find yourself on the desktop that's looking very different. So let me go ahead and show you around macOS Big Sur. The Mac desktop has also had a few cosmetic changes and now it looks more like your iPhone and your iPad. Now while the notification center has seen some changes, the big overall here is that there's now a control center on your Mac just like your iPhone. Here you can change the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth sound and other bolts of your computer. Personally, I'm not sure if this is better than the menu bar system we had for the past 20 years, but I'm willing to give it a chance. Apple also brought back the iconic startup chime, which I absolutely love. Now, if you do not like it, you can turn that off in System Preferences. Now, let me go ahead and show you some new features of macOS Big Sur. My favorite is the Photos app, which has a few new tricks under its sleeve. I never used to use the Photos app on Mac, but with Big Sur, there's new photo editing features that make it a lot more useful. You can now adjust vibrance, but it also now uses machine learning for better retouching and removing blemishes on skin. So sudden spot outbreaks can no longer ruin your travel photos. There's even a few new video editing tools built in. All we ever had was QuickTime for like trimming, but if you wanted something more than that, you had to use iMovie or Final Cut Pro. But Photos adds a few new features to make it again, like your iPhone, where you can crop video, apply filters, along with trimming. I also really like the updated Safari. I moved away from using Google Chrome. Not only would it drain my battery, but even opening it without extensions would activate the graphics card and my Mac would begin overheating. I'm a Microsoft Edge evangelist. It's great now that it's Chromium and obviously it's on Windows for cross compatibility. But if you're a Mac only user, the new Safari is where it's at. They finally fixed tabs on Safari. So it'll show tab icons and it has instant preview for when you have like 40 tabs open. You can now install extensions into Safari like DuckDuckGo search, Adblock, but please use that responsibly, and password managers. You can change the background on your home page like you can in Microsoft Edge. And there's great privacy features built in, including letting you know if the password you're using on a website has been compromised. The Messages app for Mac has also got some new features, particularly around group chats. Now, actually, a lot of my friends use WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger, so I actually don't have an iMessage group chat. But if you do, there are some great features like pinning group chats. You can change the thumbnail of the group chat and you can even do inline replies. One last feature is that the Finder has also been completely redesigned and spotlight searching is now much faster. You spend every day exploring around the Finder, so it's a crucial part of using a Mac. So my advice here is to jump in and experiment around with it and how you want to customize it. If you buy yourself a brand new Mac computer with an Apple processor, you can also even run iPhone and iPad apps on your Mac for the very first time. If you found the video helpful, do drop a comment below and let me know if your install went well and what are your favorite new features of macOS Big Sur. Do subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. My next video will be the iPhone 12 mini unboxing right here tomorrow. So thank you so much for watching. Bye.